is Fluent and Chill NFL Edition. I'm Anthony K. I'm here with my main man, J Dub. Jermaine, how you doing, man? Yo, what's going on? Talking some football. Football is in full swing. The highs, the lows. I want to do, I want to take a look back at week one mm-hmm. and talk about what we noticed, some of the things we saw, some of the questions that we're going to have. And then mm-hmm. obviously I want to preview week two. So let's start with team performance in week one. Was there a team, good or bad, that was your biggest surprise in week one? I was really surprised about the Cowboys. I didn't expect to see what I had seen from them. And again, whenever I'm starting a conversation with the Cowboys, I'm. it sounds nuts, absolutely. But I was really surprised to see how sharp Dak was. I was really surprised to see how good he was and moving that offense up and down the field. C.D. Lamb had a couple drops, but for the most part, he was really good. Um, I thought the play calling could have been better, but it wasn't nearly as bad as what I thought it was going to be. That offense turned out to be a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. I think that the Cowboys are going to be really good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much surprised with the Cowboys, and I think they're going to be really good this season. Six- I, think th- I think they're going to be really good offensively. I have questions about their defense. I think people forget last season. Look, I don't think it was sustainable. But last season, before Dak got hurt, he was on pace to to throw for like 7,000 yards. Again, I understand that that probably is not sustainable. But that being said, he looked great. Amari Uh Cooper looked like a true number one receiver. Uh, You're right. I think uh, CeeDee Lamb had like seven for 104. Mm Mm-hmm. Ezekiel Elliott, everyone wants to say, well, oh, they didn't, you know, they only ran him 11 times. He didn't have a good, well, hold on. Last season, the Bucks only allowed one 100 rusher in the whole season. That was Delvin Cook. Not one game, the entire no, no, season. The entire season, one 100 rusher. And so, and they brought back all 11 defensive players. All uh, starters, excuse me, all, all 11 starters. Correct. So to think that Zach uh, Zeke, excuse me, was going to have a big game is just crazy. Mm-hmm. So I think it was a conscious effort because I don't think Dak throwing the ball 58 times is a recipe for success. No, you, need, you need to have some balance. Mm-hmm. But I think in this particular game, you you got to see what the defense is giving you. And they were giving you passing lanes. They Not weren't the- giving you running, right? Not to mention, you're talking about a guy in Dak. When you're throwing the ball that much, what you're doing is you're, you're also setting yourself up for more bad things to happen when you're throwing the ball that much. And you're not getting everybody else involved offensively that you need to. And that is not a recipe for good, for good, for success. That's a recipe for disaster. So I don't think that that's something that they're going to be doing. I think that Kellen Moore saw what that front four was with Tampa and the game plan was going to change. Absolutely. And it did. I don't think Zeke is going to only carry the ball 10, 11 times a game. We know, they know that in order to get him, in order to go to where they need to go offensively, he needs to be involved in the offense and he needs yeah. to be involved in the offense a lot. So 100%. I, I think that that was a micro. I, I think that was a, I think that was something small and I don't think yeah. that that's going to, that's going to carry over to, to week two. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but it's, it's interesting. I've never heard. It's been a long time. Cause I had questions about what Dak we were going to see. I told you this, you know, I never trust people coming back from injury. So he mm-hmm. looked, it's one game. I get it, but he looked really good. Mm-hmm. That being said, have you ever heard so much positive, come out of a loss for a team. Especially it's with just, the Cowboys. Especially with the Cowboys. Yeah, it's, it's you know, but again, you're playing the Bucks, and, you know, we've talked about this before. 22 starters from well, last Tom, season's Super Bowl team, and all of them came back on offense and defense, 11 on both sides. Came well, back. you got to remember, too, Tone, not only just 11, 11 defensive starters coming back and 11 offensive starters, we're talking about the defending Super Bowl champs. Right. I mean, my, my, my biggest problem – was why are the Dallas Cowboys on opening night against the Super Bowl champs? Because I didn't think that this matchup was good for them at all. I thought that maybe this would be good for them in week four, maybe week five, where they had some games underneath their belt where now we could see that offense. It's probably humming at that point. And maybe that defense has gotten better. But to to, to have them on opening night and to lose Demarcus Lawrence now, he's out for two months. Yeah, that's so, that, that one's that, gonna. That's a tough one. That's, that's absolutely one. their defense is gonna struggle. But I was really surprised with the Cowboys offensively, and I think that they're gonna be a good team. I'll tell you the one, the other team that I that I was surprised with, and I was really surprised with Cincinnati. Cincinnati's yeah. gonna be a really good team this year. Um, I'm a huge fan of Joe Mixon, his ability to to hit the gaps, his ability to get downfield. I love him as a running back, and I also love him coming out of the backfield, catching screen passes and things like that, making plays. 
I love what he's doing. And I think that the talk about Jamar Chase being a possible bust, I think we over with that. I think that's done. He he showed that he's at least one game in. He's not. Can, I think everyone took his reel. Look, he, he spoke honestly about having a little bit of trouble, you know, in the preseason finding the ball because it didn't have the, the the white line on it. And I think everyone took that story and ran with it. I think he was just being honest. And I think the story was overblown. Well, and what I saw in week one, you know, Monday you said something to me because I said I still have question marks about their offensive line. And you said, no, they're better they're they're, they're better than last year. So I went back wow. and I watched the game again. And I didn't look at Joe Burrow. I didn't look at Joe Mixon. I focused on the offensive line. Yeah, they're doing some things. Look, I still think they could get better, mm -hmm. but but yeah, they they are better than last year. Like they are, like it's clear that they're better than last year. And if you get, we saw last year up until the injury. If you give Joe Burrow even a little bit of time, right? He he's a quarterback. He's a quarterback. And that was the other part too. Uh, with Mixon, to your point, he had no running lanes last year. Like he had a down year, but. Of course, he's just three guys on him in the backfield. He's going to have a hard time running the ball. Absolutely, you give well, him a little bit of space, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's good to go. So, um, I'm interested to see how they do this week um, against my Bears. Yeah, I had it. I had it chalked as a win. I'm not mm -hmm. so sure anymore. I'm that, not so sure on that now. <laughs> I'm not so sure anymore. Um, I'll, I'll say my biggest one from mm -hmm. Week One surprise. Unfortunately, it's a bad one. I I, I was. You know, maybe it's me. I was really surprised by the Packers and specifically Aaron Rodgers. I, I get it that he didn't really have a training camp, but a guy as good as he is, a veteran like him, I don't think he – I didn't think he needed a preseason. Tone, I don't want to hear that. I'm not listening to that that whole no training camp thing because Brady didn't play in the training camp. Bla Brady that, didn't play That's either. what I'm saying. Not only did Dak didn't play in the preseason. I don't, I'm not listening to that. That's nonsense to me. And on top of that, this is year 16. This is not like this is a guy in year two or three who needs some work or needed some reps. He knows what he's yeah. doing. He's a vet. Tony, yeah, you know I didn't think he would have thrown the ball in the dirt 28 times and still had a better QBR than he had on Sunday. He was terrible. His QBR. Do not let him off the hook, Tone. I know, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I would have thought because that was the defense that someone gave me. is, And I said, no. I, that, you, made, you actually made my point. I said, there's no way a guy of Aaron Rodgers' caliber should have a 13.4 QBR, 133 yards, two interceptions. Do you know that three points, three points is the lowest point total of an Aaron Rodgers-led Green Bay Packer team in any game in all of his years, with the exception of a game that he left due to injury? Since he got there, he has since never he played there. in a game. Never. Is that, is that what you're telling me? You're telling never. me that since he got to Green Bay, which was in 2004, he has never played in a game where they have scored three points or never. less. Or less. I mean, Other than a game that he left with an injury. Like, no, he played the, the whole game. Yeah. We're not talking about injury. Yeah, he yeah. played the whole game. And any he's never game played he in the game. Any game he started, the Packers have never had a three-point game. So that's how – you know, I get it. It was one game. Everyone's going to say it was one game. It was this. It was that. But, I mean, they looked really bad. They looked like a team. I don't know this for a fact. I, and maybe I'm starting something that I shouldn't. They looked like a team that didn't want to play together. He looked like a guy that wanted, as much as this was supposed to be his last dance, right? We heard the whole, this is my last dance and I'm going to play. Mm -hmm. He looked like a guy, like, I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, use the, the basketball analogy again. He looked like James Harden in the first couple weeks in Houston. Like that he just didn't want to be there. I, and I agree with that. I can't you know, agree. and he didn't come out. You know, a few years ago, if you remember, R E L A X. Everybody relax. He wasn't that guy after the game either. It was just like, you know, eh. like it just. It, it seems like he's he's not in it, and that's trouble for Green Bay. You know what it looks like to me, Tone, and I caught some heat for this. He looks like the guy in the marriage that our kids are seniors in high school. They getting ready to graduate. When they graduate, this thing is over. Yep. But until then, we're going to hold this thing together, and we're going to do everything that we can to save face. When we get yep. in front of our family, we're going to make it look like it's good. When in reality, I'm so over this. I am yep. so over you. I'm over this whole thing. As soon as this thing is over, I can't get out of here fast enough. That's what he looked uh, like. Man. I'm, I'm not going to cause any trouble. Because no, the, kids have, the kids have their midterms coming up next week, and I am just going to hold my breath until finals are done, and then I'm taking my you know my ball. And I'm going. I'm out of here. I'm out. Of, I'm gone. I'm gone. Yeah. That's what he looks You're like. Right. I, he looks very dis. I think the word is disinterested for me. That's yes. what he looked like. Yes. Yes. And that's that's never that's never good. Now he's a professional. I hope they find a way. Because look, as much as I love the Packers to lose, mm -hmm. um, I 
I still want to see the best out of Aaron Rodgers. I still want to see the best out of the Packers, and, and that's not what we got. And maybe, hey, maybe it's week one and we're over-exaggerating. But That's so what I was going to ask you, Tone. I'm glad, really quick, I'm, I'm glad to, that you brought that up. Is, is it because they looked at New Orleans, Drew Brees is gone, Mike Thomas isn't there, Jameis Winston is now the quarterback. Do you think that they overlooked them? Do you think that they looked past them? Maybe coming in with the attitude of, yeah, we can deal with these guys. We don't really have to give it everything. Because not just Aaron Rodgers. I thought the effort across the board with Green Bay was trash. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't give up, what was it, 148 yards and five touchdowns and zero interceptions. Now, a lot of that is I've been singing the praises of Jameis Winston, as you know, in the Sean Payton offense. But even that surprised me. Right. Even that, even that surprised me. So yeah, I think the defense looked at it as, hey, it's it's a neutral site game, right? Mm-hmm. It's not even in New Orleans. Nope. Um, we're not worried about their offense. We're going to outscore them, and the defense kind of played that way. And I think the offense too was kind of like, oh, I forgot, because I think everyone forgets this was a top five defense last year, right? In every statistical category, they were top five, and so they didn't they, have Cam Jordan either. By the way, don't leave that out. Yeah. So you got you have a team that. Now, you don't know what their offense was going to be, but you still have Alvin Kamara. Yes, you do. Right? Jameis Winston, I've said it, I'll say it again. I'll, I mean, I sing it, you know, scream it from the rooftops. Jameis Winston is a good quarterback. Yes, Stop saying that he isn't. He yes, is. Yes, so you got is. Alvin Kamara, you got Jameis Winston, and, and then you got a defense that's good, that's really good. So I think, yeah, I think they may have overlooked them, which surprises me because, like, in basketball, I can see, you know, Sacramento's come into town. You got 80 game, 82 games. You're like, like oh, okay, this is a bit easy one. And you let in and you lose. You lose to the mm-hmm. Kings. In football, you know, any given Sunday, man, any given Sunday, anything can happen. So it surprised me. But, yeah, that it, it did feel like they kind of overlooked them a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I guess that hopefully they don't do that again. So last yeah, thing on, on week one, a mm-hmm. couple of – was there any specific – individual performances that you saw that were good, bad, surprising that hmm. feel we need to we need to call up. Well, the bad performances that I saw that I was not okay with at all. We talked about Aaron Rodgers a little while ago. That Tennessee offense, I was completely blown away with what they did. I was expecting so much more from them. We're talking about a team who had the league leading rusher and Derrick Henry. You just get you get Julio and Ryan Tannehill had looked so much better. I mean he ran for 86 yards for the game. 86 yards for the game. I think they had uh, 220 yards total offense. They were terrible offensively. I was very disappointed in Tennessee. I wasn't – Tennessee was was a team that I was expecting. And I know it's week one, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna go overboard, but yeah. Tennessee was a team that I was expecting a lot more. So I'm thinking to myself, was that offense that bad or is Arizona really that good? So I, I'll say I, I think both. Mm-hmm. And, and here – and it's Ryan Tannehill – you know, my relationship with Ryan Tannehill is like yours with the Steelers. He keeps tricking me. Oh. He, he's in Miami, and I think <laughs> he's not a very good quarterback. He goes to Tennessee, and I say, they shouldn't do this. They sign him to an extension. I go, that's a terrible move. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe he looks he looks good. Man, and then this, so, so, so this year, I actually say, don't, don't look, you know, don't overlook Tannehill. He's good. And what does he do in week one? Uh, whatever I so if I want if you want Tennessee to win for anyone in Tennessee I'm gonna look at the camera just mail it in to me I'll do the opposite you tell me what you want me to say because he will do the opposite and <laughs> I think I don't know look I don't know that this is true but it seems like a lot of the good teams mm-hmm. played like hey this is the last preseason game because we got 17 games now mm-hmm. like I feel like they they weren't just. I don't know, not maybe not not giving it their all is the wrong thing to say, but it just I feel like they just are they're easing into the season, which uh, is weird. Like that's how it felt. Like even even Henry had it felt like Henry was like, hey, eighty six yards, yeah, times uh times seventeen games, yeah, that's okay. That's those are pretty good numbers, but he's so much better than that. Yeah. Um, so now on the flip side, look, Chandler Jones, how often is he going to have five sacks in a game? You know, that, that's that's probably not going to be you know, uh, sustainable. Right. But yeah, I think, you know, the Arizona defense was the one team I remember I told you in the NFC West, they, they're the ones, they're the wild card yes, because they, they have an offense and it's going to be their defense. Can that defense play the way they played? If they play that, if they play that way against everybody, yeah, they're, they're going to be in that conversation with I San Francisco, with Seattle, with the Rams. Like, wow, does that division look good? Yes, wow. It does. Like, wow. Uh, and that is going to be so much fun to watch. 
so especially when they play each other this year mm-hmm. that you know that's the only reason why some of them are probably not going to have as good of a record as they should right because if you think about it is there is there one team where you be like no they're going to get both games from their division no right. it's like they're all going to get a split i think Absolutely. they're all going to win their home game right uh, with the exception arizona's going to win in seattle and seattle's going to win in arizona that's, that's the only they're that's the only exception seattle, by the way they're not going to kill they're going yeah, to be like 30 30- yeah, thirty-two <laughs> seven or something. Yeah, I still don't understand that, but they absolutely right. are. No Any question. Any good? About what about it, good? Man. What about good ones that got overlooked? Any good performances? You're like, yeah, man. We're not man, talking D- enough about this. Yeah, my man Debo Samuels, man, he went for 189 yards yesterday. He, I mean, on Sunday, he was awesome. Uh, Jalen Hurts was really good as well. Um, Matthew Stafford, I, I, I can't reiterate this enough. As much as I talk down about him and his record and all of that other good stuff. Tony had a 156 passer rating. That's numero uno, not for Patrick, not, not for Matthew now, Okay, but, okay, he was passing against a bunch of DB pylons, though. I, uh-uh, nope, Tony, I'm not letting you off the hook with that. <laughs> this is opening day, okay? That means that your boys, who are supposed to be out there, are out there. <laughs> we brought in, the Bears brought in five defensive backs this week. That's how bad it is. They, Wait a minute, like, in week two. I just we got t- the job. Tony, you already interviewed somebody I, else for my job. I just got it. They called up Dion. They're desperate, man. They're like, hey, forget coaching. You did great at Jackson State. But like, Bro, I just was- got, you, you already called somebody else in for my – I just got the job. We just got yeah. finished with week one. I just got the job, and you already interviewing other people? Let me tell you something, and this is <laughs> – I said this at the time. I'm going to say it again, and, yes, I'm going to beat a dead horse. They let their best defensive back, their best corner, Kyle Kyler Fuller, go – so that they could sign Andy Dalton. And what's their issue right now? They have the wrong quarterback starting, and they don't have any cornerbacks. It was the, you know, I am I say this all the time. If Ryan Pace does something good, like trading up and getting Justin Fields, I will give him his praise. Mm-hmm. But let's not forget, this is the same guy who wanted Marcus Mariota, but didn't sign him. Signed Mike Glennon. Drafted Mitch Trubisky. Signed Nick Foles. This guy does not deserve a general manager job of one of the most historic franchises in the NFL. I'm sorry. Are you I'm saying so- Tom, that he doesn't know what he's doing? Is that I, what you're I, saying, Tom? I, I think he makes a lot of bad decisions when it comes to quarterbacks. You don't allow your best – your weakness, your weakness is, is defensive backs. You know that. You're looking at the room, and you know that's your weakness. You right. let your best corner go so that you can sign an, a vet quarterback that you don't need. Journeyman, just, by it, the way. A journeyman, by the way. It's not – it doesn't – no, yeah, I, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Pace. I'm sorry to the Bears organizations. Yeah. You guys, everybody knows how much I love the Bears. I do a show called Monsters of the Midweek every week where we just talk Bears football. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It, Pace is a problem. And yeah. if he's not on the hot seat, he should be. That's fair. That that, that absolutely is but fair. But Debo, so- I want to go back to Debo because mm-hmm. Debo, no one's talking about Debo. No one's Nobody. talking about him. And he Nobody. had a game. Yes, he had did. a game, and, mm-hmm. and Jalen Hurts, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit that I, I, I had written off the Eagles. I said, I said it's over. This division's going to be between Dallas, um, and then it's going to be a toss. I thought Dallas has the division in the East, and then it's going to be a toss-up between the Giants and uh, Washington, who's going to be second. Now with Washington losing Fitzpatrick, Jalen Hurts looking the way he looked, now I'm like, well, now I think it's a, three, a three-horse race between uh, Dallas, Philadelphia, and the Giants. I think the Giants will be better. I know that. I do. Uh, I, do I think, think the Giants will be better. You talked about uh, Jalen Hurts. It's interesting you mention that because the more I watch Devontae Smith, I see a young Marvin Harrison. The ball just finds him. The ball just finds him, and he makes plays. And he's going to be that guy who you're going to look at the statue because he doesn't look like he's much. No. He's not that big. He's ha- he doesn't have blazing speed. But then you're going to look at the stat line, and it's going to say six catches for 142 yards, seven catches for 138 yards. You're going to be like, "What the hell game was I watching?" And you're going to you're not going to be you're not going to pay a lot of attention to this guy. But he's lining up in the slot. He's lining up wide out. The ball just finds him, and he is he's going to be really good for Jalen Hurts. He's going to be great for him. I, yeah, I think the two of them together are going to are going to develop really nice. And it's funny. We talk about these. We always talk. We always get. We're always enamored by the big receivers. Oh, mm-hmm. he's six five. He's got a seven foot wingspan. He could catch everything. But guess what? There's another receiver who was small, and he was on pace to becoming maybe one of the best receivers ever before some off the field issues. Mm-hmm. But 
but boy, did Antonio Brown look look good uh, with that Tampa Bay offense this week. He, he looked like Antonio Brown. Right. That's what he looked like. He didn't look like a wide receiver. He looked like Antonio Brown. And that a lot of that came from I've, – I've, I've said this before, Tone, and you've played basketball. You know how it is. Confidence is everything. And the the the, the professional athlete, his confidence is – it's a, there's a thin line between this and this. So when Antonio Brown has a guy like Tom Brady telling him, I'm coming to you, yep. I'm coming to you, that br- that brings his confidence through the roof where he's thinking, maybe I am still that guy. I do still have it. Let me get back on my job. And he looked in terms of his route running, in terms of his go routes, he just looked like Antonio Brown, the guy from Pittsburgh that was telling that offensive coordinator, if you're not involving me in the offense, you can't win. That's what he looked like. When when a player, as look, let's the goat quarterback says to you, "I want you on my team. Come stay at my house. I need you to win. I'm gonna throw you the ball." How can you not feel? It, it gave me a flashback. Even just saying it, I immediately thought to. And there's other examples, but I thought of that one timeout where you hear Jordan and Kerr, and Kerr says, "Hey, you know." They're going to collapse on you. I'm going to, I'll make the shot. And Jordan's like, yep, I'm going to get you the ball. You make that shot. If I'm on a team and Jordan goes, hey, I'm, you're going to be wide open. I'm going to get you the ball. You, you're, you're going to make it? Man, I feel like I don't feel like I could miss. Absolutely. And that, I think you're right. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think Tom Brady telling you, mm-hmm. you're the guy. How sure. can you not? And he, that's how he played. So so let's, let's jump forward now because mm-hmm. we've got to talk about week two. There's a couple of matchups and question mark teams that I want to ask you about, and then we can talk about some other stuff that you're looking forward to, but there's three specific ones I want to. Mm -hmm. The Bills lost a game that everyone thought they were going to win. Let's be honest. The the Bills were the cream of the crop. They're going to go to the Super Bowl. They're going to challenge the Chiefs. Now they got the Dolphins this week, Mm -hmm. who's a tough defensive team, played a really tight game. They always play the Patriots tough. What are we going to see from the Bills? Are we, are we, you know, was that, was week one just, you know, hey, they need to, I don't know, get over that. We're the best, we're the favorites. Oh, maybe, you know, maybe that was a good kick in the teeth to get them well, going. I thought that that was a grind out game. And what I'm, what I'm not on the fence about is I'm not on the fence about Josh Allen being a great quarterback. So last season was not an anomaly. I think Josh Allen is on his way to being a great quarterback. I saw him revert back to the season before on Sunday. He looked like the Josh Allen from a, from two years ago. I don't think that that's going to happen. Now they do they threw different things at him defensively, and he looked a little confused. And he was running for his life too in the pocket. They stayed on him. However, to get Stephon Diggs more involved in that now that Buffalo offense, that running game, I'm still having a difficult time with why they don't have a solid running game because that's going to be a problem down the road tone that's I, I was a, that was actually i was going to ask you that's my biggest concern with that, buffalo that's going to be a problem with these guys down the road because josh allen is not going to be able to throw the ball 45 50 times a game and not just not be efficient but them because they're going to put eight nine guys in the box and they're going to they're, they're going to put not eight nine guys in the box i'm sorry they're just going to line up in four three and just well, you're not going to run the football against us so we'll double digs and we'll double your tight end so I'm trying to figure out what exactly that offense, in terms of them running the football, what they're going to do. But I do think that Josh Allen is the real deal. He did revert back to what he was doing, and I'm not. He's not. He's not on the same level with the, with, with Pittsburgh in terms of tricking me because I don't think that. I do think Josh Allen is the real deal. But they got to get that run game shored up, man. They have to get that run game shored up in order to continue to move the football down the field. Now playing against Miami, we all know. I've watched Tua, and I think that Tua is going to be a solid quarterback. He looks to me like, like he. I, I put him in the same category with guys like Marcus Mariota. I don't think that he's going to be great, but with that being said, that defense in in Miami is really good. With Xavier Howard, he looks like a guy that you're not. Throwing, he looks like kind of like how Richard Sherman was or how Ramsey was, where he's cutting a field in half. But when you talk about it, when you talk about a team like Buffalo with that offense that they have in terms of the wideouts, it's going to be difficult for Miami, and it's going to be a great test for them. No question about that. I, I think, you know, it's funny. I don't. I wasn't high on on Pittsburgh this this season offensively because I just I don't know what I'm going to get from from Roethlisberger. However, I did like their defense, so I'm not surprised that they played the Bills well. 
what I'm what I'm looking for this season, uh, this week, excuse me, is look. Howard's probably going to be on Diggs, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to make Diggs like that. So it's I think it's it's going to show how big of an acquisition Emmanuel Sanders was. I think Emmanuel Sanders needs to have a big game, and I think they need to figure out how to run the ball. I don't like either one of their backs, Moss. I think and Singletary. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I get it. It's a committee backfield that makes me nervous. Can they find a way to run the ball because they're going to need to? Um, but I think you're going to see if they're going to be successful. Emmanuel Sanders is going to have to have a big, big game. And I think Knox, the tight end, Dawson yep. Knox, he's another one that's going to have to play well for them. Yep. Uh, I, I think they win. The, I think they go. I think, look, I think they might have lived in their own heads a little bit and they're the best. And I think it was, you know, we're better than Pittsburgh. We can kind of, and I think they got kicked. Like I said, I think they got kicked. What are they reading the paper? Is that what they were doing? What are, yeah, what are I, think, I think social media, I think social media, they, they were on their phones a little too much. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's a good thing. I think teams that are favored to win need to get that, whether it's early mm-hmm. or in the middle of the season, hopefully not late, but mm-hmm. they need to get that. Hey, we're not like, I'll tell you, I, I go back, like I'm going way back. The 85 bears, right. were undefeated. They, they, they're playing the Miami Dolphins, who's the only undefeated team. And they look, they were like, yeah, we're good. We're good. You know, Mike Dick was really cocky. They're giving the ball to, you know, defensive linemen to the fridge to, you know, run in touchdowns. And Miami came in and beat them. They and had I no think, business losing to Miami. They had none. No, they had no, no business none. losing to them. And none. that, I, but I think that sparked because then when you look what they did after that and through the playoffs, they needed that loss. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't want to lose late. Like you don't want you don't want to lose like the Patriots, an undefeated mm-hmm. season in the Super Bowl. That's not what you want to lose. But no. I think those types of losses might be good uh, for the Bills. Like hopefully they figured it out. So I think they get the win this week. But uh, I think it's also going to be a closer game than people think because I think Miami's a really strong defensive team. So I think it'll be tight. The next one is, you know, the Cowboys don't get any breaks. They got no. the Bucks in Week One. They play really well. And now they go up another another really good defensive team that's going to get after the quarterback, and a team that can score in the Chargers. So do we do we take that moral victory against the Bucks, and do we see the same effort from the Cowboys again, or are they starting zero and two? They could very well start zero and two because, as you know, Tone, I believe forty nine red. If I wasn't a 49er fan, I would be rocking a Justin Herbert jersey. I think that he's going to be the best quarterback. And the powder blue, right? Oh, absolutely. It's got to be the powder blue. absolutely rocking. I'm not rocking the white. I'm not rocking the gold. I'm rocking the powder blue. No question about that. I think he's going to be the best quarterback in the game in the coming years. No question about it. Keenan Allen, his ability to run routes, they're going to have to – and with that Cowboy defense, they're going to have a really difficult time with with these guys. I'm looking at that defense with the Chargers and how they basically – I mean, it's not really saying much because it was Washington, but how they stifled them. And they got a really good test coming up with these Cowboys because the Cowboys are loaded offensively. But I think that the San, I, I was about to say San Diego. I'm sorry. I think that the I think that the LA, LA Chargers. Yeah, I, I was about to say San Diego. I think that the LA Chargers, I think that they beat the Cowboys this week. Because I, I I just love Justin Herbert's ability to deliver in the pocket, to read the defense, his ability to to, to look downfield, his ability to get the ball downfield. And he's awesome in the red zone. He's even better in the red zone. So the Cowboys got a really – they got a big-time – they got a big-time test this weekend coming up, big time. I wouldn't be surprised if they lost. I, You know, if this was still a Phillip Rivers Charger team, oh. I would say they'll find a way to lose. Yes. They'll miss a kick at the <laughs> end. <laughs> and so, I don't know. This team feels a little bit different. So mm-hmm. the Cowboys need the win because Philadelphia won – um, you know, they want they, they want to take control of that division. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they lost. Mm-hmm. And for those that play fantasy, pick up some Chargers players because they're they're gonna score some points this week if you don't already have Dolph, uh, cowboy players. Mm-hmm. We talked to, so you brought up Washington, and we've both used Marcus Mariota's name already in this conversation, which is odd. Mm-hmm. So before I get to the third game that I wanted to ask you about in the third team, does he make sense in Washington? Should they should they be calling up the Raiders and saying, "Hey, like we need a quarterback"? I don't think it's going to be Cam. I think I you know I I think Cam makes the most sense, but I think Ron Rivera picking uh, I forget the name of the quarterback he picked, but he picked someone uh, over Cam. I I still think that's that that relationship might be soured. But I think Marcus Mariota actually makes sense mm-hmm. in Washington. Or do you think they're going to go uh, with uh, uh, Taylor Heineke? 
Yeah. Did I say that right? I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to screw. I, I say up. everyone's last name wrong. So yeah. You know what? No one can pronounce my last name, so I figure <laughs> I can pronounce everybody else's. Wrong. I don't. I don't want to screw his name up. But yeah. when I think about Marcus Mariota, I'm. I can't say with 100 percent certainty. So, like for example, we took we talked about Jameis. I think Jameis is a starter in the NFL. I don't think Jameis is a 50-50. I think he's a starter in the NFL. I don't know if Marcus Mariota is a starter in the NFL. And if he is, is he a starter on a playoff team? Hmm. Because his ability to read defenses, not and most importantly, and you know how I am tone about health. Your best your best ability is your availability. Marcus Mariota stays hurt. He's always beat up. Now we're talking about an NFL where it's quarterback friendly, where you don't have to, yeah. you don't get a chance to put your hands on quarterbacks nearly as much as you did 15, 20 years ago. So for a guy not to be upright as much as he can be or as much as he should be. I worry about that with Marcus Mariota, not to mention his ability to read defenses, his ability to stand in the pocket and make big time throws. We're talking about the number one overall pick, right? So with a guy that's that good, not the number one overall pick, he wasn't, that's not true. That was, uh, I think that was Jameis that year when he came out, but even still. Um, no, but he, he, was, he was a high draft pick with yes, high expectations. Yes, he was. I know what you and, said. and we're talking about a guy who as a starting quarterback, you can't make mistakes, especially when you're on a playoff team. You can't make big time mistakes, and he does. So I don't. If I'm Washington, I may take a look. I may go kick the tires. I may pop the hood and 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 and, and listen to the engine run. But I'm not really sure if he's our guy. Yeah. But and but Washington really seems to like like the players seem to want uh, Taylor Heineke, Heineke, Hickey. Yeah. They like him. They like him. So you know maybe they he nice- loves them. He played Chase well. Young, Chase, Chase, yeah, Young Chase, Young, awesome. Chase Young's his biggest fan. Yeah, um, awesome. and look, he played well uh, in the playoffs last year. So hey, let's let's I, mm-hmm. I I say let's give him a shot because what else is out there really? Right. Um, so the last game, and this is an interesting one because it's I'm not I'm actually not curious about the team I'm going to mention first. However, the team that this is the opponent. There's a team that we saw last last uh, in week one. Excuse me, who looked like a different team in the first half than we saw in the second half. And they put a ton of points on your 49ers in the second half. So the Lions, I don't know which Lions team we're going to get, the first half Lions or the second half Lions. But they've got the Green Bay Packers coming in. So Green Bay played, as we talked about already, not very well against the Saints. They're now coming against a, a division rival in the Lions who, you know, did they did something click in the second half against the 49ers and they figured it out? Or was it just a lucky half because the 49ers took it easy on them because they had such a big lead? So I don't know what Lions team we're going to see. But if we see the same Green Bay team that we saw against the Saints, they could lose this game to the Lions too. Sound the alarm. It, we, we, gotta, we don't have a three alarm tone. We don't have a four alarm. We got a five alarm. If we see the same effort, I don't, even, I don't care if Green Bay doesn't win the game. If I see the same effort, five alarm fire we have here. We don't have a two alarm. We got a five because now – I got to start thinking about what's going on with the coach. Did this coach lose this team this early? Are we already? Are, are these guys already out on what they're doing? Because the motivation factor just doesn't look like it's there. That Detroit team, my 49ers let them off the hook. I'm not sold on the idea that Detroit just automatically turned it on with in, in the. I, I believe he's called Jared, Jared Goof. Not Jared Goff. No, <laughs> they Jared, Jared Goff. They call they call him Jared Goof. So. I think that my 49ers let them, let them off the hook. I think that that was an anomaly. I don't think that you see that again. I'm very I would be very surprised if I saw the same effort from Green Bay last week that I see this week, particularly against the Lions because considering what you just got finished dealing with with New with New Orleans, you would think that okay, we definitely not looking past Detroit. No matter how bad we think they might be, we are absolutely not looking past them, and we have to bring the effort that we should have brought against New Orleans. So I don't think that they lose this game. But if they were, but if they were to lose this game, the thing that I'm more concerned with is the effort. It's interesting because things are not copacetic in Green Bay because I think you have a locker room divided. I I, I strongly believe already told. Oh yeah, and and the, here's why. Because I, I believe since day one, since they hired Matt LaFleur, mm-hmm. that it was you're either a Rodgers guy or a LaFleur guy. And I don't think that has changed. And I don't think they did enough to bring the team together. And I think it's always been that. And I think this offseason 
made that gap wider between the two. Mm-hmm. And I think right now you have some of the players right that are like, hey, I want to, you know, Rodgers is our starting quarterback. We believe in him. There's other guys who are like, hey, Matt LaFleur is our coach. We believe in him. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's causing a divide. Now, I could be wrong. It's one week. But what I saw from the offseason, what I saw from the preseason, what I saw in week one looks like a team that's divided and that's trouble for any team. So do they, you know, do they say, hey, we need to. And here's the problem with not having a, you know, a, a head person here, right? Because there's no owner, right? It's the, the, the city owns the team. You need someone to step in and either say, hey, you two guys in a room, let's hash this out mm-hmm. or make a decision and say, hey, Rogers, you still have three good years left, five good years left. Mm-hmm. You're our quarterback. LaFleur's gone. Let's pick a coach together. You need to make that decision early. You can't let this linger. Or you need to say, you know what, Rogers, you wanted out. We wanted to keep you, but you're right. You need to go. And they trade him. Mm-hmm. And like even in week two, week three, I know that sounds crazy in the mm-hmm. NFL, but I think you let – you let those two, if this is the case, you let those two keep butting heads. You keep fighting in front of the. You talked about the, you know the kids going after. You keep fighting in front of the kids. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to they're gonna res- they're, they're going to they are going to be forced to pick a side, and then mm-hmm. you know then no one no one wins in that state. Nobody, case. Mm-hmm. and that's where I'm scared that they are today. So so those are the three I wanted to talk about. The the other thing. So I want to hear what you what you're looking forward to in week two. For me. I'm looking for proof. And what I mean by proof is, one, is the NFC West as good as we think they are? Because they're 4-0 as a division. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I, I think they are. Are the New Orleans Saints for real? Mm-hmm. Was that just a good game? The beauty is Green Bay is playing the Lions, so we're mm-hmm. going to get a win out of the NFC North. So that's good. They're not going to remain. <laughs> uh, if, they, if they all started 0-2, there'd be a problem. Although there could be a tie, I guess, technically. Are the Eagles for real, right? For me, it's, it's all these guys. Are the Bengals for real? Because they mm-hmm. looked good, right? Vegas looked good, the Raiders. Um, Houston won a game, but it was against Jacksonville. So, mm-hmm. you know, do they come back down to earth? Um, those are the what? So those are the games I want to see. Like, are you guys legit, right? Was it just a week one, mm-hmm. you know, kind of fluky game? So uh, the big one, I'm looking for Vegas. I'm mm-hmm. looking for Philadelphia. And I'm looking for the Bengals. I mm-hmm. want to see... I don't want them to win, granted, of course. Uh, of course but <laughs> I want to see, like, are you for real? Because they've got some pieces that I like. Mm-hmm. Right? like T, T. Higgins, T. Higgins is Jamar Chase, and and we just forgot about Tyler Boyd. Completely right? Like, forgot about right? him. And Joe Mixon, they've mm-hmm. got, and and obviously Joe Burrow, they've got an offense that can compete in this league. They're Absolutely. young, they're dynamic. They have they have some they have some mm-hmm. opportunity. So, what are you looking for in week two? I tell you what, Tone. I was disappointed in my – my offensive rookie of the year was Kyle Pitts. I fell in love with Kyle Pitts down here in Florida. So, I thought he had me actually thinking that trash was better than Mac Jones. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Kyle Pitts this week. I mean, he had four receptions for 31 yards. I think that he gets more involved in this offense this week. I'm looking forward to seeing him. I'm looking forward to seeing the AFC West. I know – Kansas City is the real deal. I already know that because they went 4 0 too. I'm interested to see if that continues with Denver. Denver won. And I mean, they beat a good. I think that Giants team is a lot better than what people are giving them credit yeah. for. And I think that they're going to bounce back. But Denver, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, to the AFC West and seeing what it is that they bring and are they the real deal. And most importantly, was Arizona, was that an anomaly oh, last yeah. year? Are they the game. real deal? Because I. Because I'm not, I'm not saying to myself, yo, Chandler Jones is the best defensive player in the game. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not expecting him to go for five sacks, and I'm not expecting that team to march up and down the field offensively the way they did. However, I'm looking forward to seeing what Arizona does this weekend, and do I need to start paying attention more to them? Because don't get me wrong, they're in the NFC West, so I pay attention to them as it is. But do I need to pay more attention to them than I, than I already do? Because my 49ers, we've actually had really good success against them. But do I need to pay more attention to them? So I'm looking forward to what they do. A lot has been made about your your new running back, Elijah Mitchell. Um, I, I still think Sermon's going to be the guy, but how big of a hit is it Mostert losing him for pretty much the season? Do you think they can – It's it's. I hate to say it, it's 49ers again. The injury bug is – I wouldn't even say the injury bug tone more than it's 
most art is the same. I look at most art the way you look at Baker. That's how I look at him. Okay. I, when he's in our offense and he's healthy, we are dynamic. But he can't stay upright. Last season, eight games he played. This season, he didn't even last. He barely got one, one game in. So the question that I'm the question that I'm asking is is do we move forward? Do we move off this guy? Do we move on from him? Because I don't think that we can count on him go in the future. Yeah, no, yeah. Like you're talking about next season. And the yeah, season. yeah, I don't right. think that we could count on him in the future because yeah. your, your your best ability is your availability. In the last two seasons, he's only played he, he's only played nine games. Now, I can say, you know, Frank Gore tore his ACL twice. But Frank was a tank, though. That's yeah, why you, Frank, that's why you it, call Frank the tank. So with that being said, I think it's time to move on for most of No question about that. And, and, and our running back – our running back core, the way Shanahan draws the offense up, we go run – just like with Buffalo, we go running back by committee. But yeah. I think that that's going to help us because the way Shanahan's offense is, I mean, that's going to help us tremendously. I feel like Shanahan. since Sh- since Shanahan got there, though, I feel like – not that it doesn't matter which running back is in there, but I just feel like their, their offensive uh, run game, I think as long as you have someone with some talent, it reminds me of Denver back in the day. Whoever you plopped in there was going to rush for a thousand yards. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think as long as they can get someone who, or a committee of people who can stay healthy, can you know stay in the game, and they're consistent, I, I think the running game is going to be fine. Well, I think that's uh, the I think that's Shanahan's system because if yeah. you think about it, Tony, you 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 do remember in Washington, Alfred Morris led the league in rushing. Who was Alfred Morris? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, we haven't heard from him since. That was nope. and that was that was in Shanahan's system. So I think it's the system with Shanahan more than it's actually the player. And if if most are, if he could have stayed healthy, man, I think that I mean we, we'd still be marching the way yeah. we are. But yeah, I think I think I think they're fine from a fantasy perspective. For those that uh, want to watch fantasy fluent, uh, I talk fantasy every week. Uh, I got to say this because you talked brought up Arizona. I want to see so my one fantasy Christian Kirk the wide receiver from Arizona, because I picked him. I'll tell everybody, if you haven't, go pick him up on waivers. I did. I want to see if he's for real, too, because he's one of the – you know, you got to look at those guys with – you know, there's going to be attention to DeAndre Hopkins, Mm -hmm. right? A.J. Green, I I think A.J. Green isn't the player he used to be. Uh, But Christian Christian Kirk's the guy that can can kind of stretch stretch the field. So Mm -hmm. from a fantasy perspective and from a football thing, right, they've got Mm -hmm. weapons in Arizona, too, so let's see if that, that persists. So that's it for uh, Flu and a Chill NFL edition. So on Fridays, don't forget to check out the NBA edition on Wednesdays. This week we're talking about uh, the 70s, and we're going to be taking another uh, look at another division in the Eastern Conference. We're going through each division, each decade of basketball. That's Wednesdays on Flu and a Chill. Mm-hmm. Until next week. Take it light. Take it. <laughs>